Welcome to this week's show with Crazy Gentleman Podcast. I am your host, the Crazy Gentleman, and this week's show is the one and only Bare Knuckle Performance. This week's show is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Performance, as always. And for everyone watching on YouTube, you can actually see all this stuff. Um, I got the camera pointed a little bit down so you can see the table. Uh, this is the same table I always sit at, my panhead table. And uh, yeah, I figured out I'm putting a, a twin cam FXR4 together. I'm sorry, I'm putting together a 1994 twin cam FXR. Um, so here are just a few parts that I've got collected so far, but I want to show you some bare knuckle stuff. Uh, since it's not only are they uh, the number one sponsor of this show, but that's who's on the show this week. Um, so yeah, we got some cool bare knuckle, hear them spin, bare knuckle axle adjusters right there. Put some gold on the swing arm. And uh, I wanted to show you, everyone knows their axles. Here, let's cut this fucker out. Uh, also brought to you by Simbita, Simbita Custom underscore Custom Knives dot com. Using Evans Knives as always here. Cut this axle out for you. Don't want to cut the anti -seas. Um, So this is this is the bare knuckle axle. Everyone knows this, uh, so I'll just do a quickie on this. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a separate video of this axle. Uh, just to be honest guys, I wasn't going to put the axle on just yet because I'm building this bike and um, this year it's going to just be put together um, like as a shakedown bike and, and not fully finished. Uh, just all the mechanical stuff is going to get done on it and uh, then I'm going to tear it down next year do the whole deal, powder coat the frame, polish and chrome, all the little doodads, all that shit. But uh, this year it's just gonna get all the cool mechanical stuff uh, and, and uh, whatever. So point is, I wasn't actually, I was gonna kind of save some money on this rear axle, but uh, tearing into the bike a little bit last week, um, it has a bent axle. So I'm going to do a separate YouTube video on that, but you guys can just get a quick hit here of one of these awesome polished axles made out of high grade stainless steel, 100% in the USA, full mirror polish. Um, and uh, yeah, so you will never have a bent axle with one of these nice E-clip on the end so your nut cannot fall off. But uh, a lot of these parts, man, people think, you know, uh, some of these parts are just for looks or uh, let's call it cool kid factor. But uh, the bottom line is, man, these bikes are, um, you know, FXRs now are fucking 40 years old, up, upwards of, you know, this particular bike is 30 years old. Um, and uh, they're performance bikes too, man. They're the original performance baggers. So... You'd imagine after getting fucking hammered on for 30 or 40 years, some of them, uh, you know, these parts bend, man. These parts aren't just cool guy factor. Uh, the, uh, the stock components just can't hold up to a lot of uh, high horsepower and, you know, jumping and wheeling and everything else we do with these things. So anyway, here's, uh, here's the bare knuckle axle in all its glory. You'll get a separate YouTube video on that. I'll show you the bent axle. I'll do a little install. Same with these axle adjusters. I'll do a little install video of them and uh, when I do that axle, but they're badass, man. Same with these, super functional. I should have brought one of the crappy lollipop adjusters up. They're garbage. I don't need to explain them. Everyone knows those stock adjusters are crap. These things are, a lot of people over the years have made different uh, upgrade axle adjusters for FXRs. These are by far the best. I've used them all over the years uh, before Paul came out with his. These things are by far the only way. They're the best axles out, uh, adjusters out there. Only way to go. Uh, also, 
I'm gonna give you another, this, this I'm not doing a separate video on, so uh, you're just gonna get this one here on this video uh, of the bare knuckle, um, oh Jesus, what do they call it? I call it the swing arm axle, but it's, uh, oh, the pivot block axle. Pivot block, I think, no, I think it's just the pivot axle, whatever they call it. Uh, it's what passes through the transmission and, and swing arm and holds it all together back there. Same thing, full polished, high grade stainless, 12 point on both ends, uh, super nice. I believe he uses an ARP nut on this side and this is all billet stainless steel machined. Uh, but uh, these also bend and they seize up. Sometimes you gotta cut them out of those old bikes. Uh, I don't know if that's the case for this bike yet, but uh, here's the other big selling point of these axles. When you're running these pivot blocks from Alloy Art uh, or any billet pivot block, a lot of them, these aftermarket pivot blocks don't have covers. They expose that uh, pivot axle. So when you're looking at your finished bike, you get to see that beautiful... 12 point hardware through those pivot block holes and it looks so much better than a 30 or 40 year old rusted ass pivot block and I mean, I mean pivot axle and all that hardware and as far as I'm, I know unless you send that thing out separate for chrome uh, there's no real way to finish it I mean powder coat would be weird just on the head of a bolt that's really not what you should be doing. You shouldn't be powder coating or in my opinion, painting hardware. It should be a, a real hard coating like chrome or a polish or an anodize. Uh, so you get that swing arm pivot, axle, whatever. I should have went and looked with proper name. You guys know what it is though. And uh, you get to see that beautiful thing through your beautiful axle blocks, your pivot blocks, uh, you know, what, you know, we all know what these bikes cost. You're gonna cheap out on that and see some garbage through your beautiful pivot blocks? No. And uh, I have no association with alloy art, but these pivot blocks are awesome also. Also 100% made in the USA. Uh, anyways, there's the end of that rant. Also, you can go to bareknuckleperformance.com uh, and get these cool 20th anniversary stickers, uh, which are also this year only, or this awesome shirt. I don't have a 20th anniversary shirt, but he's doing those too. Or the 20th anniversary mixed strider knife, which is awesome. Um, obviously, I have all the knives I could shake a stick at, and a knife sponsor, Evan Simbita. Uh, SimbitaCustomKnives.com. Um, so I, I'm, I, don't, I don't need the uh, bare knuckle knife, but I will say this, as far as fixed blade knives go, EDC knives, that was one of the sweetest knives I've ever handled, ever looked at, and uh, put in my pocket. It's slim, it's, it is awesome, and it is big. It's, it's a bit bigger, it's lengthwise, it's the same as this, it's just a little less handle, and the handle is way slimmer, then th this is my this is one of my hunting knives, but it's uh, the way the way Mick Strider designed that knife. It is it's really a thing of beauty. If you love fixed blade knives for EDC or uh, you know tactical reasons, it'll be pretty tough to beat that knife. Um, and they all come in their own little one-off wood burnt boxes with uh, like the naked pinup models on the inside they're all red velvet lined like it's a, it's a real heirloom collector piece he's only doing i, I want to say like 20 of them for the 20th anniversary but it's a very limited run they're already done they're not making any more and there's only a few left go get them um anyways as you know yeah as always bare knuckle highest quality american-made parts for your customs and harley davidson's uh, also, another shout out to uh, last week's show and new Patreon supporter, Nine Finger Fabrication. I kind of did not do him justice because if you listen to last week's show, uh, it was like the middle of the night when I was recording that intro 
and I was fucking wiped and I was just kind of down. Um, so I did not, this is one of my favorite tools by him. And I'm also going to do a separate YouTube video of this. This is his primary chain alignment tool. Uh, for guys that are wondering how you shim your primary chain properly, uh, you know, like to some guys it's a mystery. Um, a lot of guys don't even do it. They don't know how. And, and you will wind up wrecking everything from flywheel bearings in the engine to uh, output shaft bearings on your transmission when that stuff's not aligned and it's pulling sideways on itself. Uh, you wind up wearing out primary chains, primary sprockets. That's another way uh, you'll also get issues in a lot of these older primaries. You'll hear noises or you'll take them apart and you see your inner or your outer primary uh, housing uh, all grinded up over the years, guys don't install them properly. Um, you can run into issues with your charging system if that's if you don't have the right washers or shims there. So this primary tool, it sits on your inner primary. Uh, sorry for everyone watching YouTube, go to YouTube and see this. This sits on your inner primary case and then there's a little slot here as you can see. That's where your caliper goes through. Caliper will go through there. This is on your primary and then uh, you get your depth reading and then you move to the to the front or back, you know, the opposite side, get your depth reading there from front to back and then you shim accordingly. So you don't wreck any more of those primaries. You don't wreck your transmissions. You don't wreck your engines. Your clutches are all working nicey nice. Everything's good. Anyways, that's my rant. And uh, like I said, man, shout out to uh, Mike at Nine Finger Fabrication. He's always been a really, really, really awesome dude to me. And, uh, and now he's a Patreon supporter too. Can't thank him enough. If you guys are not going to go on the Patreon, I totally understand. I'm not a salesman, but I will ask you this. At least uh, just subscribe here on YouTube. Subscribe to the podcast, whatever platform you're listening on, um, and give me a nice rating. Uh, it's free to be nice. You should be waking up every day and doing that. I mean being nice, not waking up every day and giving me reviews. Um, but I appreciate it. The reviews really go a long way in uh, the search engine and in the algorithms. Uh, this thing is picking up by the week. Uh, this show is going awesome. New members every week, uh, more subscribers, more listeners. Things are, things are really starting to do good here as of uh, lately. So I want to thank everyone who has been supporting. And speaking of support, the Bump Shop Back Room, my boy Rodney, Evo Jesus, still the only place to get your crazy gentleman merch and all of Rodney's awesome vintage finds. And if you're a coffee maniac like me, uh, go buy his new blend of coffee, the Hardtail Blend. Uh, what else can I say, man? Go check out the Bump Shop Diaries podcast. Rodney freaking puts so much work into those things. If you guys have ever listened, man, it's him telling stories from old Easy Riders and old biker movies, and, and he's doing voiceovers. He has special guest uh, readers or voiceover people, whatever you call them. He really puts a lot of effort into those shows, man. He's a, he's a killer with the uh, audio mixing and everything else. Really cool show. Check it out. Bump Shop Diaries Podcast. Who else, man? Who else? The one and only super high performance madman burning down the drag strips everywhere in Phoenix, Arizona. Kenny's House of Horsepower. Check him out, man. Kenny has been a great friend since day one, since Chicken Rick introduced us. And uh, I don't know, man. Kenny's been a good guy to me, and I highly suggest... You ship your damn engines to him. It's springtime. I know you guys got those clapped out engines that want some fixing up. Give him some love. Send him to Phoenix. Kenny will do you right. Uh, who else? Lexin-moto.com. Punch in the code word crazy for 15% off at checkout. I will be doing a video soon also on the new Lexin Novus. Now that springtime is here... I'm going to do a little install video on my helmet because uh, to be honest with you, since it's not really riding season, I have not even installed the new Novus 
on my helmet. I've listened to it, I've screwed around with it, I put the little speakers next to my ears, and they are noticeably better than the old systems. And the interface seems really cool. So I'm gonna do a, an install video and a little review and all that on YouTube here. Um, and uh, you know, like I said, like, like you've, like, keep in mind any products that I ever will ever advertise in the past and have in, and will in the future and have in the past, um, I, I do not, I do not advertise them or endorse them unless I really do like the company, stand behind the company, we have a good relationship, and I test their products first. If I don't think it's a good product, I don't care how much they're gonna pay me or try and put it in front of my face. Uh, if I did that, I'd have a lot more sponsors and you guys would see a lot more stuff coming through the door here. I don't, I stick to what I like, and that's it, I don't care. Uh, I never have been able to uh, be doing things that I don't like to do in life or endorse things that I don't like or people I don't like. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, my friend Big Truth, the Big Truth podcast, uh, for you guys that don't know, he's been on here a few times. I've been on his show a few times. He's the owner of Chop Ahead. He just announced on Instagram today that he has the Big Truth podcast store and website up and running with new merch. Go buy a Truth shirt. Uh, he's been a good friend for 20 years and he's been on the motorcycle scene even longer than that, building some of the classiest choppers that anyone's building. Um, he's had his bikes at Mama Tried, Born Free, everywhere, down from Mexico to Canada to Moon Eyes, dude. Truth is, is a top-notch builder. I'm lucky to call him a friend. And uh, shout out to my producer, Whiskey Eye. Uh, for always making this happen and uh, let me send her all this stuff so late uh, and last minute as always and um, I don't know I guess that's about it uh, so yeah as I said this show is with bare knuckle performance but the cool part is uh, Paul's son Sam who is you know like any other family business stepping into the role uh, of that and uh, he makes his worldwide debut here. We sit down in the green room at Mama Tried uh, again this year. From what I understand, uh, it was Nirvana's favorite room to hang out in. And uh, that's wild, man. It's kind of a room with a pulse. I really hope you guys have been watching these last few Mama Tried episodes on the YouTubes. But, uh... oh, also, uh, I do want to give another shout out to another new uh, donator to the podcast. Um... Check him out on Instagram, uh, Burnt Up Wood Burning. Uh, he does wood carvings, like not wood carvings, wood burnings. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Basically, uh, different cuts of wood, anything from little circular pieces you would put on like a coffee table. I could send him this slab. Oh, I just thought of that. I should have him do this slab. Maybe he'll do that in the future. If we do, I'll show it to you. Like you could send him this, like a piece of wood and he'll burn whatever you want. I could have him make this like into the crazy gentleman table and have my logo put on here. You know, he does stuff like that. Any wood he does laser engraving on. Um, go check him out on Instagram. You'll see, you could send him a picture. He could put like your dog on there. He could put your motorcycle on there. He does a lot of like, you know, motorcycle based stuff. Um, but uh, yeah. I don't know. What else? What else? That's about it, man. Enjoy this show. I'm always excited to sit down with Paul. I appreciate all his support. Literally from day one, he was my number one episode, like episode number one. If you guys haven't gone back and listened to that, listen to that. Interesting part about that is um, during that episode, he was actually, Sam was in the uh, cabin in Tennessee that we were at at the time. And uh, Sam was like, 16 15 or 16 years old we talk about it a little bit on this show but like even back then you're talking um you're talking like four and a half years ago already um and like sam didn't even have his first motorcycle and paul was talking about parts they were machining or wanting a machine for that and uh now sam's doing he's building all these bikes and he's doing his damn thing at bare knuckle man which is pretty cool and uh it was really exciting that he uh wanted to come on this episode so, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I couldn't be much more excited. If you cannot tell, 
I am always excited to endorse Bare Knuckle Performance. Uh, anyways, enough rambling. That's like 20 minutes of just intro. So, uh, enjoy it. I'll see you next week. Started off the show with Mike. I'll start off this one the same way. Before before I uh, got here, you guys were the number one request for a show. Really? Yeah. yeah. You, well, then badass. Mike, and then Chicken Rick. Really? Those are the three requests. Oh, that's badass. Yeah. Man. So here you guys are. Thanks. Yeah, dude. Honestly, man, people fucking love hearing hearing about you. Well, Your, that's cool. Uh, bare knuckles, like the people's fucking. What do they call it? Like the people's. Uh, Champ or something like People's that. People's hero. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know the fucking. May not expression. be the hero you want, but the hero you got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. What's new with you guys? Uh, well, we got our FXR tour bike done. Yeah. Six months late, but yeah. it's done. Well, so. I wanted to ask you, what was the biggest hang up with that bike? Because that is that is pretty everything. Late. <laughs> everything. Yeah. Um, it fought us the whole time leading yeah. up to the tour. Yeah. You know what though? Like it's funny though. After we missed the tour, it didn't Everything fight us that bad. Yeah. It didn't fight us that bad. Yeah. Like it was weird. The last couple of weeks, it's just like, okay, got that done. Okay, got that done. Okay, got that done. You know, we were still making parts Wednesday night, and we loaded up and left Thursday morning. God damn. We were still making parts. Like I had to like we had to make like a throt a choke deal, and Mike was in there welding up, you know, little cable stays and polishing them, and he was still polishing stuff and. Yeah, we were making and polishing the pipe on those days. Though. Yeah. Right. And it, ah, I damn. mean, it. he primed it, did all the right stuff to start it, and then it turned over maybe three times and fired right off. What was um, what was um, the biggest hang up for not making the tour? Was it that, I saw you guys trying to scramble to get a gear for that char supercharger. Was that like the big hang up at that time? No, that was for about four months we were looking for but yeah. we did actually find it before the tour. Uh -huh. We just said we have parts come in wrong. There's all kinds of stuff. We got the wheels for the bike the day before we were supposed to leave. Holy shit. Back from plating. Right. So we sent them off. We got had a hot job to get them plated. And the guy just polished them. Oh. And I was a guy in like the Phoenix area. So, you know, Justin and Chris from FXR Division called in a favor with some plating guy down there and he got them turned around but it still took a handful of days and yeah shipping and this and that and this and that and you know dude, we looked at it, it like we hadn't even aligned the sprocket yet right. you know, so you, it's an fxr so probably build an fxr not only do you have to align the, the rear you also have to align the drivetrain mm -hmm. it's like man and we had polished a lot of stuff that we initially wanted to plate and it was just you know getting finger blasted the whole time you know so it's all this wasn't looking primo yeah so we called it quits we tore it apart sent all that stuff out to get it plated yeah and it came back we're really glad we went that route and so the cool thing is is there's one little bitty tiny thing i have to not fix complete i forgot to do one little weld on a ship shaft which whatever we got to do that when we get home but that'll take 10 minutes right. and the rest of it is just tuning it and dialing it in like there's no backing up which it sucks to get a bike done come home and have to back up and redo stuff right right dude when you guys were building it you posted a picture that had me fucking laughing it was sam coming off the polisher just <laughs> all black yeah. and he said i got the black lung pop yeah. <laughs> it fucking had yeah. me laughing, dude. He, uh, <laughs> he's a trooper back there we had a polisher um just had some personal stuff to deal with maybe he'll come back someday but yeah if you're a good polisher and you're in the st louis area and you want a job let us know because we need a polisher you're gonna be polishing all day yeah it's all yeah that's <laughs> all you're doing that's all you're doing not looking at cool motorcycles all day yeah yeah, yeah you guys have master. a lot of behind the scenes guys that people don't know like you guys have quite a few employees there well no not anymore oh. it's down oh, to just really? four of us oh. it's just four of us so one common misconception about our shop is that we make everything we don't we do first run of everything and there's a lot of parts that we do still make everything you know cradle to grave but we have over 700 part numbers now and i've been saying that for a year so we're probably even higher than that but um we just can't keep up with it so yeah. it is all obviously still 100 percent american made most of the shops are local to us right um brian from tpj makes some parts for us now uh john the painter at indian larry helps us out occasionally 
Uh, Justin at Revolution Speed does some stuff. Our buddy Will at Faith Forgotten still does a thing or two. Or somebody else out of town that I can't remember. Mm. Pat from Lead Sled, we've been talking to him about him maybe doing a little bit of stuff. But then the rest of it, like our axle guy is local and he's not in the motorcycle scene. And um, we've got a guy in Kansas City making parts for us. Right. So it's all 100% American made. It's all mom and pop shops. Yeah. Um, so that is one big thing. We just can't handle the the volume. It's just there's way too much. Like we may get back to where we do all of it or most of it again one of these days, but right now we're kind of it's just weird, man. When you start doing this thing, I don't have any I've never worked in a machine shop in my life. I've always I'm self-taught for the most part. I had a little bit of this and that, but I don't know the proper way to go about building bills of material and having an inventory system. So now it's like, okay, we gotta stop making so many parts. We gotta get better control of this inventory and ordering system. Right. So this year is gonna be a big bit of that. Right, you know, right. Just kind of doing our bookkeeping, so to speak. What the fuck is going on there? I have no idea. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, that's like, uh, I don't know if it was you. I've said it before though. It's like, you guys are one of the people that does pull it off, but in this industry, you got insane talent, fabricators, welders, all that. Then you got some good business guys, but it's fucking rare you have one guy That's like you tough. that does both. Oh, it's, I wouldn't feel that It's fucking that rare far, that man. a shop pulls that off. I appreciate you, know? you saying that, but I don't know that I'd go that far. We're working on it. You know, I've told this story, I probably said it on the podcast. I just thought if you built the best stuff, people are gonna flock to you and that's not the truth man you have to be a marketing correct person yeah and there's a lot of people in this business that can't build shit but their marketing is above and beyond and yeah. i can't i can't hang with those guys because i and, and also you know i've got a little bit of a my pride might get in the way a little bit but i i can sleep i can sleep at night knowing that i don't bend my own rules right you know? so it's like you know like even so nicole does our marketing now and she she did a like a little video thing to put out about you know calling the bike a masterpiece or you know the, and i'm like that's so up for interpretation i would rather you know boast about things that i can prove you right know, like, hey you won't make something better than this like you won't you won't make a better axle than we make um that kind of thing but you know anything that's up for interpretation you know like style wise or looks or you know, like you can't really say it's the best motorcycle or the best this or that because you know that's up for interpretation uh, you know we are humble um, but we're also very confident, you right, know what I mean? Right. So there's a big balance there. Um, yeah, more along the lines, I, I like to use this expression, I'd rather under-promise and over-deliver. Yeah, you yeah know? that's cool you say yeah. that. My mom used to tell me that when I was first starting my business. She always told me that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the motto to live by, man. Um, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and even like you said, like, uh, you guys use other shops to manufacture your parts and all. I don't think that's a bit, like it's all sourced in America. It's all made in America. Mm. Even even your raw material, a lot of it's American steel. No, it right? all is all yeah, American yeah, steel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like so. What's the difference if made it's, by Americans? Yeah, yeah. What's the difference if it's in fucking St. Louis or? We're Tennessee? keeping Americans like, working, and that's all you know, that matters. You yeah. know, it just and I think that's why we have to do better education about that because people just look at our at our price and they get sticker shock. And it's like, here's the thing though, dude. You buy that axle. Yeah. Your grandkid, if you pass that bike down to your son and then to your grandson, your grand that's the axle will still be on that motorcycle. Right. It's not gonna break, it's not gonna it's not gonna corrode, it's never gonna screw up. Right. You know, so we don't I never make things based on price point. Dude, and speaking of that, I'll just I'll just say it now. I'm gonna make a fucking YouTube video. Uh, I'm gonna pick up an axle today actually, I forgot about it. Uh, right before I left here I pulled an FXR apart with a fucking bent axle. Like, people don't realize there's so many of those bikes running around out there yeah. at this point with fucking bent axles. Yeah. And these, you know, like, backyard mechanics are just, like, pounding axles out, pounding them back in. That's the other half of the fucking problem, too, like, wrecking your swing arms. Yeah. You know, like, those axles just don't really hold up. Yeah, and that's why we axles. started and That's why we started making those, but also the pivot shafts, because the pivot shaft will freeze up in the transmission. The guy told me he had to take, it was all stuck together. You had to flip it on side, take it to a truck shop with a big hydraulic press to press it out of there. Yeah. Which is scary. You know, you never know if you're going to break your transmission case, but. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why, you know, we got to work on education a little bit better. It's like, yeah, it's. You can get a $40 axle out of a catalog that'll work, you know, I'm sure, 
but ours is 200 bucks and you'll never buy it again right right you know and it'll look good if you don't scratch it up it's going to stay just as polished and pretty as the day you you know 20 years from now is the day you slid in there because it won't grow right right um and yes i you know dude you know how we are we don't just make things to make them it has to be the absolute best so that's why price doesn't when people are just trying to sell shit, right. price matters. When yeah. you're trying to make the best part right. that you can put on a motorcycle, price doesn't matter because those people just want what's best. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's something I don't think, I think anyone that makes a, a premium product, like whatever industry you're in, like fuck it, if you're making the best stuff, you can't charge fucking Chinese prices. Mm -hmm. You know, like it just is what it is, man. We couldn't make it. Like if you, if you want the best, you're going to just have to pay for it. It is what it is. You know? I look at the business model of, you know, importing, outsourcing your parts to, you know, Asia. I'd be a millionaire 20 times over because we have a great parts line and they look good. And if you loosened up your tolerances and didn't worry about the, you know, composition of your material, I could make a fortune. Right. But I'm not going to make a fortune and lose my integrity. Right. And here's the deal. Like, if other guys do that and they're okay with it. Right. That's on them, and that's I'm. I don't. You know, whatever, man. I'd rather see impl I'd rather see Americans working because here's the deal. More Americans work and have skilled labor jobs where you're making forty bucks an hour running a machine rather than, you know, nineteen dollars. Right. You know, flipping burgers or whatever the hell those people make nowadays. Those people can then spend more money on your product. Right. So like, right. you know, I'm not just doing it for that reason. It's because. Driving an economy. Yeah. Really. When I was a kid, you know, we, both of my grandfathers were machinists at McDonnell Douglas, which, of course, is now Boeing. And if you had it back then, it was made in Japan, which we all know now made in Japan is usually pretty good stuff. Yeah. But if you had a, a rent, like I, I know my, for sure, my dad's dad, there was a made, it said made in Japan wrench. And if I'd have been a little bit older and walked in there with that wrench, he'd have probably thrown it right at my face. Because, <laughs> you know, they yeah. went to war against those guys. Yeah. But then they come home and they've got this great pride in what they do, and that was just Jake, instilled. my boy. It's good to see you, dog. Yeah. Oh God, I'm dying. Y'all were doing fine. I, I knew that. Yeah. He did. Yeah, I know. I'm just. I know he ran off. Just let him know. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it, man. I get it. And I think that, especially you know when COVID popped off and people couldn't get stuff and yeah. I think it started to become a little bit more apparent and uh, I don't want COVID or you know any kind of government bullshit to happen again but I wouldn't be opposed to the boats not hitting the docks for a couple of years right right, 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 that. right you know right. did jack off the price of material because all of a sudden the people that are buying imported material I had to buy the material I was buying right My, our stainless went up seven times right. seven fold so if I was paying ten dollars for a blank I was paying seventy Jesus yeah, Christ. so that's why our axles had to go up because like it literally went up seven times. It's back down to about five, five and a half right now. But damn, that's just the blank to <clears> just start the, the axles. That's for the material. small ones. That's the yeah. small that's ones. Just material. Some of the big ones are 120, 130 bucks a blank. Holy shit! Yeah, before I came up here, I saw the bagger one, the eccentric adjuster. Mm -hmm. What a fucking chunk of stainless that that's must be. It's a lot. Oh my it's god, a lot. it's a lot of machine work. Damn. Um, yeah, that's wild, man. Uh, so funny. That was but yeah, back to uh, back to that FXR man. I was telling you yesterday. I think it's gonna be one of those fucking iconic bikes that's gonna go down in history. Personally, I appreciate. Like when you think of just like like Perowitz has some of those bikes. Ness, like I don't know, man. I see that as one of those bikes in 20 years from now. Thank you. Like I don't I don't know if you're ever gonna sell it or what, but. I feel like know. I feel like there's got to be some rich guys fucking licking their lips wanting to buy that thing. <laughs> well, it's one of those big checks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if anyone is going to buy that bike in the future, you have to use a big check. <laughs> <laughs> I tried cashing those once, just like uh, Happy Gilmore, and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're funny, though. For my brother's 30th birthday, uh, I gave him one of those big checks. I gave him the cash, but, like, I also had one of those big checks oh, made funny. up. Yeah. It's pretty good. But, um, yeah, are you guys already starting the next bike? I mean, we've got, we have four lifts in that area of the shop, and there's four bikes on them, and there's probably two or three st stuck to the sides. There. Mike's got 12 or 15 bikes to build right now, so, yeah, we're not oh, doing shit. another, we're not doing another shop build for a while, um, 
he's got a project he's working on. Mike's been talking about a couple things. Uh -huh. I'm taking a break for a year or two uh, on my personal stuff. Um, I say that now, but so we've got a couple bikes next week. Yeah, we've got a couple bikes for Pikes Peak Harley Davidson that we're wrapping up. We'll be releasing those in the next two or three weeks. Um, yeah, a really cool soft tail with a monster M8 in it uh, that we did for a real good friend of ours. That'll be done. Um, a chopper that we've for a fellow we've done an FXR and a Dyna Four in the past. Another panhead chopper for a guy, which that one's kind of a cool story. I built a chassis for that in like 07, and it got passed from friend to friend for a minute, and then this guy bought it a year or two, and he's finishing it up. And then for Sturgis, we've got a Blast-Off M8 uh, FXR, an RT, and then we've got a Blast-Off uh, Twevo, you know, so it's a twin cam and Evo cases. Uh, that's going to be a Blast-Off build where it's going to be a full chrome frame and chrome swing arm and we just you know it's a full build full like you know nothing untouched dude and those wheels you're making are those available now mm -hmm. the yeah the belligerent on. wheels yeah. yeah yeah so the the kind of the cool story about that um for the people who are listening may not have seen that bike yet it's a mono shock fxr and <coughs> excuse me i was really stoked on the wheels so i was like you know what let's do a sprocket brake because you know everybody says you can't run a sprocket brake on a on a swing arm bike, which I don't know who everyone is, but they don't know what they're talking about. So right. I'm like, let's do that. And then we, it, really cool to tie the whole thing together, we were sitting at Sobelman's here in Milwaukee mm -hmm. a year ago for this show. We had to do our FXR Friday update. We pulled out a napkin, and Sam had the idea of doing a mono shock. So we drew up on the napkin and had a mono shock because, you know, now the brake's on the other side, there's no shocking away, you can really see that wheel. Yeah. So that's how that idea came about. Um, Who's, and, um, and whose sprocket brake do you wind up using? So we got the the caliper from ISR. We okay. use ISR hand controls on a lot of stuff. Yep. So front and rear brakes, but then we uh, we did the, the sprocket to match the wheel. Oh, okay. So it's okay. a 48 tooth sprocket that just matches the wheel. Cool. So um, a oh. little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah, that's another thing I get a kick out of. I, I got a, a sprocket brake on my FXR also. But those four piston ones, man, like everyone says they don't work or whatever. Dude, that motherfucker stops like it's mm -hmm. a regular fucking PM caliper yeah. back there. Yeah, there's like, it's if they're done right. Like they're if they're good. done right, yeah. that's the fucking way to do it. So man. the old Exile ones, you know, not to bash on Exile because he did a lot of cool stuff and he still does, but that was basically a Springer brake. Right. Yeah, it was just a Springer brake that was rolled down. We used those for ages back in the day, you know, 20 years ago, because it was about the only thing on the market. But the problem with it was people didn't know you got to stand it up and bleed it because when you roll it down, you know, the bleeder valve was like at nine o'clock, so to speak, instead right. of at 12 o'clock. So the air's getting, you, know, you got a pocket in there. Right. We never had trouble with them. They right. weren't as good as the new ones. But right. They still, right. They're better, as good, better than a drum break. Yeah. Well, a lot of the complaints, too, that I, I've heard about guys that run the sprocket brakes generally are on like older pans, shovels, or whatever, you know, let's call it a chopper of some sort. Um, and let's face it, man, a lot of those bikes are leaking a lot of oil, sling, yeah, sling sure. fucking oil everywhere. Yeah. So that, that sprocket really never gets a chance to dry up and and get brake. It's just greasy and yeah, Those guys have never ridden a cable-operated drum brake. Right. Or, well, you know, yeah. a mechanical drum brake, because yeah. like, those just, they suck all the way around. Yeah. You're just slowing down, you're not stopping. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yo, what about you, Sam? What do you what do you personally ride? What's uh what's like uh Sam's garage look like? I have a Sportster, a ninety seven Sportster, and mm -hmm. I have a ninety four FXR that's not even done. Yeah. Not remotely done. Cool. That's gonna get torn down and rebuilt. Tell me a little more about your Sportster though. It's not he's downplaying it because it's a lot more than a ninety seven Sportster. Yeah. It's got a lot of Buell parts on it. It's got a twelve seventy five kit. Makes about one oh five to the crank. God damn. Not, not crazy fast, but it's quick. That's yeah, it a moves. fucking ripper, dude. It moves. Cool. Do you do stunts and shit on there? Are you like a wheelie guy? Or? I'll do a couple wheelies. I'm not hand dragging or doing any of that stuff. So. <laughs> right, right. He and I it's were too pretty. I can't wreck it. Yeah. He and I were supposed to meet at the gym a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, is this something on? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. We were supposed to meet at the gym the other day, and I was driving. He was riding. It was just one of those weird, you know, January, February days where it was warm enough to ride. And, I'm going down the highway and I see a sportster doing a wheelie across the overpass and it's him at the gym. <laughs> I text him, I was like, be careful with those wheelies. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, man. That's cool. And we're at yeah. the gym and, he, and 
I, one of the guys said something to him about why do you, I don't know what it was, and he's like, oh, I'm on my bike. And he's like, oh, really? You rode your, your bike all the way over here? He's like, no, my motorcycle, I'm not riding a bicycle. <laughs> <clears throat> Dude, I don't know why. I'm, I haven't got a chance to visit you guys yet, but I pictured a gym being at Bare Knuckle. There, there was, was until oh, a couple really? of months ago, until a month or two ago. We get so I have a pretty big building. We rent part of it out, and uh, that the new renter needs the entire building, so we had to kill the gym uh, for now. Okay, so we'll have one again soon. Yeah, I just always pictured you like firing up a CNC and then hitting the fucking bench press or something. <laughs> <you know? laughs> it wasn't quite that convenient, but. Um, yeah, it was. I miss it already. I yeah. hate driving to the gym. It's so much better just to go yeah. right next door. You guys are kind of uh, out in the country too, so you're kind of limited on like gym, to, yeah. gym convenience, really, right? Yeah, yeah. We're pretty it's about fortunate. Forty minutes from you. Yeah, it's about forty minutes for me. It's probably twenty minutes for him. Yeah. But we're pretty. We're actually very fortunate because I mean, you can. We also go to you know like combat sports stuff too. So we're mm -hmm. real fortunate because there's some like world-class stuff at that gym yeah like really good is that something shit. new that you're getting into is uh like I mean, some mix, mixed martial arts yeah so he's he grew up wrestling and i used to box and um actually not to get too derailed on the this stuff but when he was a kid we would send him there's i mean dude it's perler wrestling and they're just they're world-class uh wrestling camps for kids and he would go there in the summertime and uh, now we're going back there and doing jujitsu and stuff. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And it, yeah. that's where the weight room is too, so. Cool, man. Yeah, it's fun. Um, Reminds me that I'm old, but. <laughs> How old are you now? 47. Oh, okay, you're not that old. Yeah. You're fine. It's all good, it's just no. My mind doesn't think I am, but my body knows better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always tell people I'll be a 16 year old kid in my head for the rest of my you life. You will be. Man. You know? You will be. And I don't buy into that bullshit either, man. Like, I fucking turned 40 this year, and I, mean, I personally, I still literally feel like I'm 16. Like, That's I, good. I don't, I don't know, man. Keep taking and care people of yourself. Are, people always fucking, I don't know, they're always crying. Oh, the minute I turned 40, I fucking lost my vision, and this and that. I'm like, man, it's because you're fucking letting yourself get old. <laughs> you can't fight that eye thing. No, you Trust can't me, fight I've the tried. eye thing, but, I mean, you, can. you know, you can keep your fucking body going, you know? Like, yeah. like uh, you got to stay was, active. Like, I was talking to, you guys know Long John out in Arizona? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, like, I was talking to him, uh, or, like, um, Kickstart Mike. Kickstart Mike's in his fucking 70s, dude. And, like, you know, talking to those guys, it's like, you got to take care of yourself when you're young if you want to be riding fucking motorcycles yeah. into your 70s yeah. and hunting and, you know. Yep. You just can't fucking let yourself get old, man. Yeah. You know? It's tough when you, like, he hasn't hit it yet, but, well, you kind of are, actually. You, you know, I would stand in front of a CNC machine all day, and then right. I'd be, well, you're all, that's, I'm not sitting at a desk, but it, I'm not really, I'm not bending over, I'm not moving my knees, you know, and then you just, you also, you're so focused on business, you forget to get out and do stuff. Yeah. You know, and as much as I do love what I do, there's no but to it, really. I, I love what I do, so it's hard to okay it's five o'clock i gotta stop and go to the gym or you know whatever it might be yeah you know it's tough because i just want to keep working right you right know, it's not just i enjoy doing this with my hands at the moment i also enjoy finishing the job and standing back and looking at what we've accomplished yeah how old are you now sam 21 damn dude yeah. that's fucking he's been crazy. at it for so long too man it's like i yeah i'm like damn he's been here like 10 years now it's like no it's only been like four yeah yeah you know? <laughs> yeah i remember um the first podcast that I did with I think I was 16, yeah. I think that was around my 16th birthday, actually. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I remember on the, I think it was on the podcast or before it or after it, you were you were talking about uh, his first motorcycle at that time. Like, mm -hmm. it's fucking crazy, man. I was like five or six, and I got him a Honda. Was it a 70? I think it was. Yeah, yeah. it was a 70. CRF 70, yeah, that's what it was. Cool. Uh, 125. Yeah, his feet were like this far off the ground when he first started riding it. Like, he couldn't even... Mine still are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you couldn't keep yeah. him off the thing, man. Yeah. It was cool. Fuck yeah. Did you ever get into uh, racing motocross or anything? I did one race. Okay. <laughs> At the local Did it go fair. bad or what? I, I always rode trails and did that kind of stuff, so... Okay. Trying to hit doubles and triples, like... Yeah. No. He hammered that whole hole shot, though. We were practicing the hole shot for forever, and he just he smoked everybody there, but then it 
when it came like, oh yeah, I'm not jumping all the yeah, way over there. Yeah, more technical. <laughs> and those other kids, it was, it was at the local fair, but it was like some kind of a circuit thing where you know these kids were racing all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dude, I always fucking loved riding motocross. My thing when I was racing. For me, the scary part was there's fucking other people around you. Yeah. It's not so much doing the sure. track, but I've had guys land on me. I had some one guy come down, dislocated my shoulder. I had another dude come down on on me another time, broke the whole subframe off the bike, like cracked the bike clean yeah, in half, crazy. dude. Jeez. Like fucking, I just felt them smash into my back, and then I flew off. Everything but fell apart. the fucking bike took such a hit, dude. Like if he came down on me, it probably would have killed me. Yeah. I'm lucky he came down just behind me, but yeah. I, th I always thought that was the more dangerous part. Not so much like you just out there jumping and fucking around. It was like the other fucking lunatics doing the same yeah. thing. Do you remember like the maybe two heats before me, some dude broke his neck on the triple, mm. just like missed the jump, landed off to the side. Got yeah, the so jump. yeah, it wasn't even. I mean, he didn't even case out. He was like off the track. Damn. Flat landed. Dude, you yeah. want to hear a crazy story? like, all right, put your helmet on, get out there. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you a fucking crazy story. We had just got there, we unloaded the bikes, and we're running just to do our first practice laps, right? There's guys already out there practice lapping. Some dude thought that the berm in the turn was, was a, a jump? fucking jump. Dude, he jumped right into the fucking stands. Crap. And, dude, it's fucked up. I don't even know if I should be telling the story, but this literally happened in front of us this fucking seven-year-old girl got uh -oh. fucking blasted yeah dude they airlifted her out she fucking died in the hospital really she was bleeding out of every fucking oh, hole horrible, it was man. crazy what the hell dude. was the guy thinking i don't know man i, I mean he dude he jumped the he jumped that berm came through and took like fucking i don't even know how many sections of the fence out and went clean right into the fucking stands dude man. yeah and that fucking poor girl was just sitting in the stands watching that's horrible yeah, yeah that's pretty yeah, it was crazy, but um, like some of that wild shit that used to happen at the the board track racing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Spectators. How got many killed. guys died back then? Spectators man. got killed quite often. It still happens. Oh man. Well, well, yeah. Spectators oh, are getting yeah, Spectators get smoked every year. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah they say um, with uh, rally racing, it's like one of the most deadly racing in the world because of the spectators, like just standing in the woods and the rally cars are fucking. Oh, they'll get out of the street around. with cameras, though. Right, right. They'll try to, like, Same just Baja, jump out of the way at the last minute. Right, Baja, yeah. Like I never heard of the board track thing. I thought just the racers. Well, back in the day, you know, the other dangerous. thing that's wild that'll kill, that would kill people uh, in board track days was the splinters from the track. Oh, no shit. The, the when splinter, you're sliding. Yeah, the splinters would be so rowdy that you'd get a, you know, foot long by, you know, half-inch splinter and it'd just, you know, it's stick like you and you'd bleed spike out. Going through. Yeah. I never even thought of that. Holy fuck. Wild, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's gnarly. So nobody ever interviews you. We didn't talk about it. I want to ask you a couple questions. <laughs> Hit me, David. What was it like interviewing Paul Cox? Oh, it's a fucking dream come true, man. That guy's Isn't he a badass? The fucking top-notch best, dude. Dude, he's amazing. Yeah. He's a, my favorite part about him is how humble he is. So humble. He is just like... So humble. So nice, so kind, so caring. Couldn't, so couldn't ask yeah. for a better guy, man. Great dude. Yeah. One of the best. Um, yeah, just like he gave us the whole tour in the shop and just seeing, just hearing him talk about all the history in that place was just like, yeah, I don't know, I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah. It was awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. I met him like weeks or a month after Larry, eh, maybe, maybe six weeks after Larry passed. I just mm -hmm. happened to be passing through New York. I was like, you know what? I always skipped these kinds of opportunities when Larry was around because I was around him numerous times. I didn't want to be like a super fan and right. Larry, you know, so I just always kind of stay quiet. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stop in. And Paul welcomed me in like I was family from way back. And yeah, I've been good friends with him ever since, and uh, big admirer of his work, of course, as well. Yeah, dude can do about anything. Yeah, I always say I think he is. I think he's. Uh, just the most talented craftsman there is, man. Like, who else can do all those fucking things he does? He paints, he fucking fabricates, does m fucking knives, fucking paints canvases, like... Puts engine parts together that aren't supposed to go together. Yeah, builds all his own engines, and, I mean, the fucking guy is just so talented, yeah. man. It's amazing. He's I don't know of anyone else in the industry that does everything like that. I mean, the only thing he sends out is chrome. 
Yeah. The, the craziest part too is he didn't say this on the podcast, but like when he's showing us around the shop, I noticed there's no paint booth. So we asked him, we're like, you know, I, I thought I was like, I thought you paint your own bikes. He's, he goes, I do. Because I just fucking drop cloths. I'll paint them right here in the corner. And they come out fucking show yeah. quality, dude. It's fucking wild. It's like, crazy. That guy really is an old world craftsman, man. Like, he is. There's no fucking, like, no offense to anyone seeing seeing out there or anything, but like, that guy really does everything manual machine, by hand. It, it's, it's wild, man. Yeah. The work that guy turns out, and it's just him in there. Yeah. Like, he has uh, uh, another kid who's super talented, but like, it's a very part time thing. Like, Paul's work is like, it's him, dude. It's yeah. just him in the shop, you know? And like, it's that's not the, like you can turn those bikes out quick. No. No, They're not at all. And, and that was the other thing, like, I, I felt very honored because, like, he, he made a point, too, to say, like, nobody's allowed in there. Like, that's his, yeah, that's that's his fucking zone, man. Yeah. Like, it's an invite only. There's no signs. Like, <clears throat> you wouldn't even know what fucking door to walk in if he didn't tell you. Like, yeah. it, it was awesome, man. It was certainly, I, like, since that happened, um, people have asked a lot about that one and uh, Dave Perowitz, like, those were the two, uh, I don't know, like peak peak of this podcast career. I don't know if it, it, it'll ever really get much better than that, man. Like, You know what's cool about Dave? I can't remember how old he is. He's, you know, early he's 70s. He's got to be in his 70s. Yeah. I sat outside of the Holiday Inn with him during Sturgis one night this past year. Well, a couple nights, but one night. Everybody went to bed around 11, 30, 12. Mm -hmm. And we sat there until 1, 30, 2 o'clock in the morning and just talked about motorcycles. Yeah. He's still as passionate as anybody I've ever known. Yeah. He's, and he, yeah. He's, he's doing that Born Free build right now, and he's just suit. I talk to him every, you know, once a month or something like that, just about this and that, and uh, he's just stoked on the bike. Yeah. Just, you know, it's a mess frame, and he just... Dude, he's all over the place about motorcycles. He just loves it and oh, yeah. passionate about it. And Dude, that guy works eight it. days a week still. Yeah. Like, and same thing. Like, they have one other helper in there, but yeah. it's just him and Jody. Yeah. Like, you know, I've been there a few times now since. Uh, like, I don't know, Dave really, he, he's, I can't say enough about him too. Yeah. But, like, dude, you go there and he's in the booth, man. Like, I was in the booth with him the last time I was there, and there's still people, like, walking in there, wanting his autograph and shit. And it just stopped painting fucking signed welding helmets. <laughs> like, that guy's the fucking real yep. deal, man. He's awesome. Incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, last time I was there, he had your tins. Yeah. For that bike up there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's fucking just him in there shooting. Yep. Still Laying out flames. Taping flames, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's They're wild. perfect, too. Yeah. They're so perfect. Yeah. That's oh, king of flames, amazing. man. You know? Yeah. He's the king. But um, that's the other cool thing, too, with... with uh, with Perowitz and Paul, like when you're when you're looking around their places, like it's not like them just going in there building bikes. Like, dude, Dave fucking everything Dave has is fucking custom painted by him, customized in some way. Yeah. Every fucking where you look, dude, it's fucking wild. Like those guys live that life fucking eight days a week. Like they, they can't get enough. I asked mm -hmm. Paul that too. Like, what keeps the fire going? He's just as passionate as day one, you mm -hmm. know? Like, they just love it, man. That's yeah. what they're on this earth He's for. He's an artist. He has to get it out. Yeah. More. Yeah, they just have to get yeah. that out of their system. Yeah, and they'll never... I mean, they'll be doing that. I hope day not. Die, I hope they man. keep doing it. Yeah, yeah they're never going to stop, dude. Dave's been building bikes since probably, I think, five or six years before I was born. Yeah. I think he said he built his first... Uh, his first Sportster chopper was... Uh, I don't remember what 73 year he 73-ish, I think. Yeah, it was... It, I think it was even... I want to say he said he got his first bike in 68, but, like, so built right. the first proper chopper, like, the end of 69 or something. Oh, was it like, that right? Yeah, it was, it was, I don't remember. I'm going to fuck up the years. I'm not good at the information thing, but. Yeah, his dad's little wood it was a long he turned time. into a paint booth. Right. I'll tell you that story. Yeah. Fucking just cool. wild, man. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Pat from Lead Sled yesterday, and he had gone out there and painted that bike for their high seas rally yeah. giveaway thing, and, um. He spent a you know a week or something like that with Dave, and he got to say he's like, dude, he's just so excited about motorcycles. Yeah, like, yeah, it's Dave. Yeah, he is, man. And he just uh, he just drives an old Chevy truck and yeah. gets to that shop every fucking morning. It works, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't say enough about those guys. I hope that there's guys my age and his age that carry it on like that for yeah. that long, you know, because you just don't know. People have the attention span anymore. Right. Yeah, it is cool, though, man, seeing young guys like, like Sam. And I, I don't know, man. I used to kind of think, like, with the mentality of, like, you know, this is all going away, you know, like, young kids aren't doing this anymore. But, man, there's so much upcoming talent now that yeah. uh, the bar's been so raised in this, like, custom industry over the last 10 years Dude, that I have full faith in the next generation at this point. Not as a whole in the world. We need some fixing, but uh, right. but in this generation and in this upcoming chopper scene. The last few years, I think, has changed it a lot because, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Indian getting involved a little bit more. You know, Indian pushing Harley. Mm -hmm. Harley coming out with the Pan Am. Harley, you know, looking a little bit closer at what not just customizers are doing, but also what, you know, the younger generation is into. Yeah. The baby boomers have bought their last motorcycle. They're not going to fund Harley anymore. You right. got to start, and you know what? It's almost too late to look at my generation because a lot of us are like, I don't mean I'm not part of that, but a lot of the guys my age are like either on their last bike or if they get another bike, it might be a BMW, it might be a Goldwing. Right. You know, so they really need to focus on the people between my age and Sam's age, um, and I feel like that they're doing a good job of that, and that's helping drive it. Yeah. Um, you're right, there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. Yeah. I, yeah. I hope the government doesn't fuck it up. I mean, I have little, Yeah. you know, you and I are kind of the same page on that stuff. No faith in the government, dude. <laughs> no, they're going to fuck it up. You know, I don't know yeah. how much longer we'll even be able to buy new combustion engine yeah. motorcycles. Um, and every eight or ten years, they come around with some new scare about the EPA stepping in and eliminating this and that. And I hear a little bit of rumblings of that again, but... We'll all still be going to bike shows, and we'll still right. be going to rallies, and we'll still be riding our motorcycles on roads we're not supposed to. Yeah. My big fear is, like, in my lifetime, if they do do away with the combustion engine, or, like, at least a large part of it, like, what's that going to do for driving the prices up for the stuff that... The old stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Like, will I even be able to afford that shit anymore? Buy them up now. You know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Who knows, man? I don't know. It's also wacky. I, I'm a, I don't know. As much as they're trying to crush it, like I think the combustion engine will be around for. It's gonna have to until they, you know, you know, it, 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 the whole. It's not even worth us talking about because it doesn't deserve the airtime. It's right. bullshit. Right. Well, that, bullshit. that's also why I don't worry much about like a lot of like. Let's just keep it simple, the way me and you feel about the government. The truth will always come out. Like, so when they say, like, oh, fucking, there's not going to be any oil left or whatever. Dude, the fact of the matter is there's so much fucking fossil fuel. It ain't fucking going nowhere. And and the bottom line is, if you want to, like, really find the truth, too, is, like, follow the money. Oh, yeah. Dude. Like, so dude, so we so. can't fucking charge all these vehicles. It's too expensive to make them. Like, Before you want they started plugging the cars in in California, they tell you to turn your air conditioning off during the day. Right. In the it's, summertime. It's, it's like all you bullshit. think you're gonna like you're gonna sell it like in thirty five or whatever, you can't sell new car new combustion engine cars in California. Right. You guys can't even deal with them charging, you know, what five percent of the cars in California might be electric right now. What do you think's gonna happen when all the trains are electric, all the right. all the trucks are electric? Like it, it's just not gonna work. It's Plus so, you wanna talk there's about no grid. There's you wanna no, talk about a lack of natural resources. Like there's not enough fucking lithium and cobalt to even and here's to the keep up. Like an electric they, they, car know. is not powered by some magical thing that shits out electricity. Right. right. You got a battery in there that stores power. Right. The power is still coming from coal. Correct. Or like or you nuclear. know you know what I get the biggest kick out of these fucking electric racing series, right? You fucking I've never been to one, but if you ever like like look online or look at the videos, they're racing fucking electric cars and motorcycles, but the parking lot is full of fucking cat diesels on fucking charging portable them. generators yeah. fucking ripping diesel charging those fucking yeah. things yeah. it's like did you watch that long way down or long way up or whatever it was with uh ewan mcgregor and charlie uh what's his name did you I, ever I watch the two where they're on the bmws no dude you gotta watch it okay. so it's called the first one's called long way down or no long way around the second one's called long way down then the third one which is recent is long way up so the first one they ride 
their BM. This is like 2006, 2005, sometime. They ride their BMWs from England to Russia, then they hop a plane to Alaska and ride to New York City. The second one, they ride all the way to the tip of Africa. How did I never even hear of this? Dude, they're amazing. It's just, it, it just. The typical listener, you know, might be a chopper guy or an FXR guy. Right. This is more about adventure mm-hmm. or adventure riding as it is motorcycling. But, dude, I'm going to tell you what. The first one, when they're, like, in Mongolia and shit, and then they're on the Road of Bones. You know what the Road of Bones is? Yeah. yeah. So, like, Charlie wrote it. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, before Paul, that was my biggest fucking podcast. Too. Charlie something. That was dude. another big one. Yeah, Charlie something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then the third one, they rode elect live wires, Harley mm-hmm. live wire, where it was still Harley. They rode them from Tierra del Fuego to Southern California. Damn. There's no fucking charging spots. So they're plugging in like a 110 outlet at people's houses and stuff, and they're like, okay, well, we've been charging for seven minutes, we're at 12, or seven hours, we're at 12%. So then, then I'm not bagging on them. I, hey, look, electric, any kind of greener, if you want to call it that, any kind of cleaner, We'll call it cleaner because right. that's not kind of a fairy weird way to say it. Right. If we do it cleaner, it's better. I get it. Like right. dude, I grew up seeing smog above the city. I, right. And it's like I don't see that much anymore. You know, certain cities, yes, but St. Louis, where I'm from, like it right. used to be just a cloud, just like a nasty brown cloud, and very yeah. rarely do you see that anymore. Right. It's better. I get it. Yeah. But the technology hasn't gotten there yet. Right. The infrastructure is not there yet. So they're trying to do this. Next thing you know, what do they have? A big truck with a diesel generator following them. <laughs> now they've gone backwards. You'd have been better just to ride a Pan Am. If I don't even know if the Pan Am was available yet when they shot this. I don't think it was. Or your BMW or a KTM. You'd have been way better off riding that. Right. And you'd have saved all the fossil fuel that right. was burnt with the diesel truck pulling the diesel generator to charge your motorcycles. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's well, just one instance you know, of how asinine it is. We're just not ready. We knew, yeah, we got to get there, but we're not there yet. Yeah. Well, my other big so thing stupid. is, like, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't think I'll ever own anything electric, but, like, I don't mind the shit existing. Mm-hmm. Just don't fucking force me to, it's just don't tell me what to do, man. you know? Like, it's like that with everything. Applies to everything. Let me have my fucking choice, dude, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, it does. It applies to everything. That's, that's my Have you been problem. to any third world country? Um, the closest third world thing we did was, uh, me and her just got back from Costa Rica. So I have not been to Costa Rica yet, but... Oh, no, I've been to Mexico, too. Okay. Costa Rica is beautiful. Mexico is Mexico. What's the... Costa Rica, you can't, part even, of Mexico com- can't even compare the two. I've done EDR a bunch of times, just okay. the Baja Peninsula. So you've not been in any bigger metro... No, 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 no. So, like, even in Nepal, Nepal, you get outside... Of, like, Kathmandu is obviously completely... Oh, it's super... Modernized. Dense, no, it's not modernized, really, but it's densely populated. Millions mm-hmm. of people. You get outside of there, and you're in... It's basically jungle, mm-hmm. but it's mountainous because you know you're, the elevation. But it's jungle and smog everywhere. Really? Tiny villages. You're in the middle of nowhere, just and it's gorgeous, especially if you get up early and you see the sun come up. And then at eight o'clock, it's just there's smog everywhere. Really? Yeah, because there's zero control of any of that stuff. So, Damn. again, there's the balance. Like you got to right. kind of meet in between what these wackadoos in America are trying to accomplish. Right. And what these people are not putting any effort into. Right. You know, like, right. it looks like America did 30 years ago. Right. And, you know, we did what we needed to do. And people also underestimate the Mother Nature. Like, Mother Nature is built to process all this stuff. Right, you know, it's right. Meant, I'm not saying throw your plastic out in the water, but I'm saying recycle this and that. But there's so many trees and plant life and, like, algae and, like, all that kind of shit. Coral, right. like, it's all processing that carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, whatever the hell it is. The, the, the world's built to to filter to filter it. yeah 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 you know but we can't it's, it's just, gotta be it, we gotta we can't be the wasteful. Up. yeah we yeah, do yeah and we have right and maybe a couple other countries have right developed, the rest of the world has developed not. countries have worked on it right. yeah yeah china and india like whatever they do in a week blows us out of the water for a decade right right that's no bullshit i don't remember the exact numbers they, we were in that paris climate accord thing and we got out yeah india's real bad yeah. <clears throat> oh shit, we got the pro in the house, dude. Pro. <laughs> Not a pro. <laughs> Rick is definitely a pro. This is the Are guy. Are we still doing it? Are we still doing what? The podcast. Yeah. yeah. Jump on, dude. Is it on? No. It's, it's on. on. It's on right now. The government podcast. It's filming <laughs> right now. 
<laughs> yeah, dude. Do you, have you ever met Rick? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think we met in New York, maybe, right? The first oh, time, yeah. Rick? Totally. Black party. Yeah, Rick comes along for the good ones, man. Like, he was there with Perowitz. Uh, he was there with Paul Cox. Like, Oh, nice. He's, uh, yeah. he's the best fucking sidekick that I could have. <laughs> Shit's fun. We've been going, we've been going for a while together. Yeah. Cool. Are you from out that way? Yet. He's Connecticut, yeah. Oh, right on. Yep. Yeah, Rick's, uh, Rick's the best, man. Lucky to have that guy. He's, uh, he's a Marley guy now. He's good at what he does. Yeah. I guess I didn't win that giveaway bike. Didn't get any phone calls. Oh, Jesus. Warren's bike? That, yeah. that ST? We donated some parts for it. I was hoping to win it. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to Mike about that, um, Nine Finger, when he was on here earlier. Uh, I didn't realize that you guys had such a hand in that thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we donated Fucking a bunch of parts, crazy, man. and then Mike went up and uh, did some engine work and some other stuff. Yeah. Answer that for me real quick. I can't remember it. <laughs> the dogs, they, yeah, we got to take care of the dog. So. Did you guys bring the dogs? I took, uh, we brought Bonnie, but we had to leave Angus at home. He's, he's a little bit much. <laughs> still he, a puppy. Yeah, he's still a puppy. Yeah. Didn't you just get a dog too, Sam? Wasn't one of those yours? No, the other one's uh, Nicole that works for us. So oh, okay. uh, Mabel and Angus are brother and sister from the same litter. Cool. Yeah, so it's kind of cool to see each other every day at work. Yeah. Um, raise hell. That's cool. So They definitely raise hell. Yeah. yeah. Mabel will come home with me and Angus sometimes, and Angus goes home with them yeah. pretty often. So Cool. Yeah. Community dogs. Yep. That's cool. Um, and he takes them all the time, too. Yeah. So they definitely. <laughs> yeah, Bonnie's got a bed in my house. Nice, nice. That's cool, man. Well, fuck, dude. I don't want to kill all your guys' time. Uh, you want to wrap it up? Whatever, dude. Uh, I always say that to people, and they're like, nah, fuck it. We're going. Let's just keep going. Well, it's 2.30, and we close at 3, right? So, yeah. We'll yeah, need a lot of get, do your thing, so man. I'll let you out of jail. I don't want to keep We're going. good, dude. We enjoy it, man. We're fine, man. Um, I don't know, man. You want to just send them off? They know where to reach you or whatever. Yeah, uh, baronuncleperformance.com. You know. Instagram, famous Facebook, whatever it's called. We've been putting a lot more effort into Twitter. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Are you guys going to completely jump off all the other I'm platforms? I'm trying to. I really want to. I, yeah. What we may do is just post a ghost, not put any effort into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, tired of being censored. Yeah, they yeah. censored the hell out of us. I think I got blasted twice last week just for some petty bullshit. Yeah. Meanwhile, I opened my DMs up, and it's nothing but porn and prostitutes. Dude, exactly. Like, you start the, seeing that now. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Insane. It's freaking insane. You can fucking see titties on Instagram now. But like, like, oh, and buttholes, like, the whole deal. It's like, yeah, it's crazy. But, but like, I put up, like, we did a, a little video of our, you know, our anniversary knife. It's got, like, a naked lady on the bottom side of the lid, but it's, like, very classy, and you can barely see it in the video because right. of the way it, it, it Well, that's another thing, suspended. too. Like, uh, like Symbita Custom Knives is uh, one of the sponsors here. And, dude, they, they fucking censored, if you just put a knife on there now, like, they're questioning it and banning and... It's like, dude, it's just a fucking knife. Right. Meanwhile, you know? you, they got terrorists cutting people's heads off on social media. Right, right. You can see the craziest shit on there, but like, you know, whatever. Bring back magazines. <laughs> Shut this shit that's down. That's some real Bring caveman talk right there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I am, I guess. <laughs> yep. Anyways. Am I wrong, though? Was life better back then? No, I, dude, I get it. I yeah. Mean, I was, I, yeah, okay, yeah. there's a lot of great stuff. There is, for sure. Yeah. But, dude. No, I get it. For a lot more, and you, you didn't walk around like this all the time. Yeah, you're living head. on the internet. Yeah, everybody's on yeah. the phone all the time. Yeah, I get it. I, I have that I go to I go to something like this, I'll have like 400 text messages because I don't look because I'm with my friends and I'm experiencing things. I'm looking at bikes. We're going out to eat. Yeah. It's like I won't look at my phone for 10 hours. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, just before uh, when I was waiting for you guys uh, to do your thing up there uh, was the first time I checked all my messages the whole weekend. Really? Yeah, and it's like, oh, I'm here. Where pissed. are you? Yeah. Like, dude, I haven't looked at fucking Instagram in two days. You know, yeah. it's like, I don't know. I turn mine off from Friday at about noon. Yeah. My Instagram, I don't look at it until sometime Monday morning. Yeah. So then it's like, just messages. At, and it's like, I have to, man. I just got to get away from it. Yeah. Send us an email if you want an answer. Yeah, send an email. Yeah. No DMs. Yeah. No DMs. Yeah, I, I am guilty in my, in my regular life of fucking being too addicted to these things too but your I, know, I know how to get away it. from it your i know and i fucking hate that your business man. depends on I it so it. does ours I, I, I actually never had social media until this and i really? i said that yeah i i never got on it or anything and i said unless i have a business and a reason to be there 
I don't want to, I don't want to fucking participate in it, you know? And I'm, I still don't do a good job at it, you know? I don't engage there's, how I should. I just, it is what it is, man. If I don't there's do a lot something, of upside I'm not doing to it. it. Yeah, there's, a, take care of there's yeah. a lot of upside to it because, you know, back in the day, I'd have, we'd make a new part, we'd have to put out a press release, wait for six to eight weeks for the magazine to come out. Right. Wait for people to get the magazine, wait for them to call. Now we got a new part. Right. As soon as it's ready for market, <coughs> you know about it. Right. Well, dude, so, it's a powerful tool. It's the lifeblood of business now. It is. But, However, but it should be a tool. It right. should be a tool. It's, it is right. built. It is 100% built to addict you. Yes. Yeah. I, I sure. have a, I've been saying this about phones for years. Uh, it's, a, it's an awesome <coughs> tool. You need to use it. It can't use you. Yeah. You know, like, it's, That's the thing it's get a balance, you, man. With social media, you're the product. Right. Because right. they want to know what you're doing because then they right. know what to sell you. Perowitz actually asked me that on, on the podcast, and I was shy to answer it because I didn't really know how to word it. He was like, how do you make money doing a podcast? You know, or like, what do you sell? The real answer is you are the product, mm -hmm. you know, like, and that's how Dave has built his business too. Like, he'll tell you, he is the product, like mm -hmm. the brand Perowitz, sure. you know, like, but you know, you need to, you need to find the balance, you know, it is hard, man. Cause it'll fucking addict that's you. That's why I just turn it off on Friday. I'm just, you know, take the weekend off. And... Yeah. But you guys do an amazing job too, in terms of the social media and all that. I appreciate that. I, I feel like a lot of people do better than we do, but that's probably just because of my attitude because I hate it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, Nicole that works for us, she does an amazing job. She does, she's kind of the driving force behind it. Yeah. However, I am the one that posts it, so you get my attitude with it. Right. You know, and. Right. Um, I asked Bobby this one time because he runs all his, he, he runs his social media and, um, like, because he, he puts a lot of controversial stuff up there, you know. Um, does your social media girl get upset sometimes when you get on there and do your thing? Uh, when or we is get it just banned, like, yeah. yeah, she's like, we can't afford to get banned right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She says that a lot. <laughs> um, that's our brand, though, dude. I know. That's our brand. Like, you know, since I was in my 20s, I've had FTW and FTF tattooed on me, like... It's just yeah. You're, just you're not gonna change punk rock. You yeah. know, it's punk rock without being punk rock. It's just the it American spirit, man. You're not gonna tell me what to do. Yeah. And if you do, it's even less likely it's gonna happen. Right. Um, <laughs> we're just here to do what we do, and we do a good job of it, and we provide a good product, and we're fair and polite and giving, so you give us a reason not to be. Right. But and so it's just like, hey, if you're anti-american in any way shape or form i'm gonna call you out on it right you know and i don't get into political shit but i do get very constitutional so if you're fucking with the constitution i'm gonna say something right you know, so it's, i'm big on second my, amendment my thing fourth amendment. my thing is like this world is big <laughs> enough like uh some people uh will say the same shit like don't post this or it's too controversial whatever my thing is like, well, fuck it, then just look somewhere else, man. Like, it's a big enough world. Like, yeah. find a different brand, find a fucking different podcast. You know, I don't know. You know a lot of the stuff I it's post a big is enough tongue world. in cheek, too. I'm just being a smart ass. You know, I, I, like I to... tell, I get a lot of fucking bad messages, too, some yeah. of the stuff I put up there. And I say that, too. I'm so like, dude, it's just the out. internet. It's a joke. Yeah. Relax. And I kind you of know? get a rise out of you getting offended by something that's really stupid. Right. It's like, you're so small minded. You know, it's, yeah. That it offends it's just, you. That's what I always say. It's a small minded mentality. Right. It's man. not like, like I'm stealing from you. Right. I didn't rob you. I didn't slap somebody. It's, right. It's just a just joke. It's the internet. You. Like, yeah. we shouldn't be so fucking serious on that. We should that. have thicker skin. Yeah. Can you imagine if All in the Family was on TV again today? Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> People, oh I my mean, God. it wouldn't last 30 seconds. No. They, Nothing they would last 30 seconds. They'd pull the plug. Anything pre 2000 wouldn't last 30 seconds, dude. It's crazy. Yep. But I don't know. Want to end it before we get too angry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Man. See you guys later, Paul. As always, thank you for your time. Sam, thanks for making your fucking worldwide debut. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rob. We appreciate yeah. what you do, man. Yeah. Um, you've got a great reputation, and uh, people like listening to you. We really we love working with you. So thank you for everything. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. See ya. <laughs>